male dementia residents would say, men retire at 65 and so many become dormant, especially those with dementia. You just go downhill and get depressed. You've got to fill up on that which is intellectually stimulating and newsworthy. The press, the news, quizzes, the chaser, good conversation. Unless we have that input, we will go down. We've got to have that input to be informed, to be intellectually stimulated. So this group were very firm adherents of being able to think, be informed and bring that information into their intellects. And they used to do this every night with the evening news. It was their ritual where the small group would sit, listen to the news, listen to the chaser, the quiz show, absorb the information in silence when everyone else was in bed, most of them, and respite. They would get their relaxation and respite from the busy, often chaotic day at dementia units. But at night, because after seven o'clock, that is when dementia residents are calm and peaceful. A very important time. Because in the day in a dementia unit, there is so much going on that all dementia residents have to cope with. So much noise, so much activity, you know, the medication trolleys, the meals, the clatter of the kitchen, the phone ringing, multiple conversations always at the same time, and the television going as well, etc. So <clears throat> it's a very, it can be a very stressful place to live in with all this multiple noise and multiple activity going on. So it takes some tolerance to be able to cope with it, a lot of tolerance in fact, but at night, after dinner, a lot of the residents go to bed after dinner, and the residents that want to sit and absorb the news and the information and the politics and all that's going on in the world will sit and watch the TV news and the chaser, which is very good because it's the quiz show where they can absorb all that rich intellectual information and get that insight and information to be able to fuel them for the next day at the dementia unit. And not just fuel them intellectually, but the silence helps. It's just some time in the day that they can have where that, where when it's externally quiet, it's much easier to be internally quiet. And you need to be inter internally quiet to be able to think. I mean, they have so many dementia stress issues that they're having to cope with mentally that to be able to settle everything down and have that quietness so they can be present. A quiet environment really helps with that. And actually, dementia residents, interestingly enough, have two advantages. They have lots of disadvantages, no doubt, with memory loss, present memory loss, past memory loss, direction orientation loss, and dementia blanks. I mean, that's extremely stressful, all of that from time to time, but it's not constant. But of course, they can have anxiety and depression as well, which can be constant. But the two advantages with dementia, the first one is that because of memory loss, they don't have that disadvantage of the mind pulling them into regurgitating and refueling negative thoughts. They don't go over the past, really, because they may have distant past memories back to their childhood and when they got married, but present memories, mostly gone. So they're not thinking about, you know, the pain and problems of the present, as many of us do. So the mind's not regurgitating and refueling and hyped up with negativity. It's just not activated. It's not just not working in that way. So they're free of that. And the other thing they're free from is technological interruptions. They don't have cell phones. They haven't got a smart TV that they're scrolling through. They've only got the one program up on the screen that everyone's watching. So their mind is not, or well, their thinking capacity is not racing at 100 miles an hour. It's not fueled by technology. It's not fueled by negative thoughts. It's not, it's not fueled by fear of the future or pain of the past. 
In fact, in dementia units, dementia residents are very good at being present. Yes, because it's day by day in a dementia unit, very much day by day. Just get through the day. We're not worried about mortgages. We're not worried about the future. We're not thinking about the past because the memory's deficient. We are just right here today doing what we need to do, you know? So it's good. It's really good because when the dementia resident can get into a positive space, they're delightful, humorous, funny. They make good relationships. It's just lifting them out of that depression, settling the anxiety, coming into the present moment, and then they're not having to combat pain and problems of the past because the memory and negative thoughts is not fueling that. So thankfully, that's one advantage they have, as well as, you know, it's a fairly, it's quite monastic, really, in a dementia unit. I mean, there's no addictions going on because you have to give up addictions when you enter. There's no alcohol except for one or two, um, just one generally, maybe two glasses of wine at happy hour once a week. But other than that, there's no cigarette smoking or drugs or other alcohol. There's no hard alcohol. It's only wine. It's very restricted. No cell phones. <laughs> you know, the person really, they've just got themselves. That's it. Uh, there's no extra addictions or baggage or other things fueling them. It's They haven't got Twitter and YouTube and, you know, Facebook and everything else rushing at them. They've just got their own self to deal with. That's it. And if they can garner their concentration and focus and capture that which is interesting and be interested in the news and the quizzes and the activities and the thinking and the communicating, they can have a lovely little quality of life. They make good friends. They think well. They're in the present. They're not worried about what's happening tomorrow. They're not concerned about the past. And they can strengthen themselves once they get into this space. They can strengthen themselves into a very good space of quality thinking, quality relationships, and because of that, have a quality of life, which is the aim of this wonderful work that these dementia residents are involved in. Now, it's not that all of them are intellectual elites, but there are some pretty bright people in dementia units. I mean, some people can't read hardly or, or little, uh, but that's catered to as well. They'll have the women's weeklies that they flick through in the magazines. Um, some of the other residents tend to say that it's just, you know, cabbage information. Just the only thing it exercises is the eyeballs. <laughs> that's what the men say about the women reading women's magazines. But the thing is, it's something to think about, to look, to enjoy the colour, the gloss, and it gets the reading skills going, which is very good for cognition and engagement. So I do think, especially the magazines about Queen Elizabeth and the royal family, that's very much part of the women's life, Queen Elizabeth, because her history is their history. And it's very good to be able to tap into her life and history and as a result, be able to remember their own. So it's not all glitz and glamour, but cognition and some engagement and reading skills as well. That's why the Women's Weeklies and all reading, well, not novels, they're too difficult, but you know, ma um, magazines, National Geographic, picture books on New Zealand or colourful picture books, and for the men, books on tractors and cars and trains and things like that, which they can actually look at with a brief description, read that and get some engagement with. So I've written two books, The Resident's Voice, and The Residents Rise, both from a dementia unit, both on Amazon and my website, pietervalentine.com. And all the residents' experiences are in these books, very entertaining and interesting and informative, and it's good to read. So thank you for your engagement and subscriptions and likes. Please subscribe and thank you to those of you who are. Thank you.